Hey everyone, Brianna Winner here. Welcome to the Off the Bench podcast, and it is time to talk about week 12 of this NFL season. I'm here with three amazing people who are going to give you an inside scoop of their respective divisions, as well as the rest of this week's games. We've got Brandon First, aka First Report, Coach Brandon Lupian, and Raider Jim, whose team really should have won this week. Sorry, uh, you should have won. You should have beat the Chiefs. I'm sorry. Uh, but how are all of you doing tonight? I'm a... Uh... It's been a, a tough week for us Eagle fans, but, you know, it was, it was a fantastic new. week of football. But that's and nothing new. No, you're right. <laughs> you are correct there. Thank you very much. The salt just came from the heavens onto my wound. Um, but that's what Brianna is there for. And you are correct. Uh, luckily, you know, the best part, I was, I was driving up to my old place of employment today and I was thinking about what I was going to say about the Eagles. And I really do think we can all relate to people we've worked with that have surrounded themselves with people that are just a little bit worse than them. Now, they're not great at all. Don't get me wrong. But they're better than the people they've surrounded themselves with. That is the synopsis of whoever wins the NFC East. It is going to be below 500 and it will be, well, we were better than our brothers and sisters in this division. Well, so stop talking about if, it. If so. you didn't have that tie and it was in the lost column, oh, yes. yes, you'd all be tied. <laughs> you are correct. Then that tie is holding that division together. It's been two weeks of the Eagles losing and us still holding that position down. That tie is holding us in that first place spot. But, um, I, I, I have absolutely no faith in my team, but I am very, very happy with the way the NFL season is going because we're still playing football. Um, yeah, looking down some... the road, looking down the road into the, the first round of the playoffs, there is money to be made in that first round game. Whoever plays against that team from the, the East, especially uh, with no big fans. money to be made, especially with no fans. Cause at that point, it's literally just the elements you're fighting now. If you are a dome team, you know, unfortunately the Saints are one of them, but I don't think they're going to be a team that has to deal with Philadelphia because I think they're only playing one playoff game if you catch my drift. Um, but this is a situation where you're only playing the elements. And I really right. do think that um, the, the Packers and the Bills and the Eagles and those Northeast teams will have a full on advantage over the Southern California or the Southwestern teams, if you will, that don't really have to deal with snow flurries in January. You know, if it drops below 60 in Texas, they're running for their, you know, throw pillows and same thing here in California. So it, it's, it's only a certain part that has it and at the same time um we really don't even know where we'll be in a couple months so who knows but yeah the eagles the nfc east trash we're trash i admit it it's it we shouldn't get a home playoff team but we will um and that's all there is to all there is to say about that greater jim Raider Jim. Raider Jim says that uh, thank you for the the uh, remark about who should have won, should have, would have, could have, and uh, Raider Nation just doesn't go with that. We either win or we lose, and when we lose, we're not real pleased about it. You should have uh, won. We in the AFC West, I've always looked at it this way. For how many years now? The Chargers have never won a Super Bowl. Their Super Bowl is any time during a regular season when they can say, "Yeah, but we beat the Raiders." What well, doesn't fly? If you are an Oakland Raider fan, a Vegas Raider fan, an LA Raider fan, there is no, well, at least we won this one for posterity's sake. So uh, good performance by all means. But uh, once again, uh, unfortunately, they left it in the hands of the defense. And that's never a good thing because it may not have been the same slice of Swiss cheese that it was the last few years. Uh, nonetheless, it was Swiss cheese and Mahomes and the boys found every hole they had to find. And, and the minute they, the Raiders took the lead with a minute and 34 or 43, whatever those two numbers were, I just shook my head and said aloud, too much time for Mahomes. This, this is over and it's not going to go in favor of the Raiders. And sure enough, you just march right down the field. You can't let that happen if you're going to be a contender. So what's happened with the Raiders is uh, they were one of those many six and three teams and that loss 
was a big loss, bigger than it may seem right now, because now it's catch up and surpass. And too many of those variables where we hope all those other six and three teams also, um, you know, fall off a cliff somehow. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, and AFC West, when we get to that, it was kind of an interesting weekend uh, in other games too. Okay, Coach Lupia. You know, the Saints just win, baby. Sorry, Redder Jim, I just had to use it. That, that's it why I couldn't um, make a dig. <laughs> it applies. And, and, and you know what? Like, no one knew what to expect. Brandon and I spoke about it on Saturday's show as far as what to expect from the quarterback situation. And it's just like, why, why the heck do all those prognosticators second guess a guy like Sean Payton? Um, he knows the ins and outs of every one of those guys on his squad and he game plans for every one of those guys on his squad, especially the offensive weapons. And you know what? Like it just showed. So, you know, I, I, uh, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving to everybody, um, that's listening. And I'm looking forward to another wonderful night and show with uh, these fine people. And um, let's get rolling more than anything. Well, before we get started, make sure to follow us all on Twitter, myself at BWinner12. Uh, Brandon first at First Report, that is F-E-R-S-T Report. Uh, Coach Lupian at Portland 76er. And Raider Jim at Raider Jim 1090. So we're going to talk about the... I want to curse right here. Um, the poop show that's going to be Thursday. Yeah. Tomorrow's games, we're going to start with uh, the NFC East with the Washington team and the Dallas Cowboys. Look, this day is going to be a shit show. So, Brandon, let's first let's start with you. <laughs> you know, okay, so I think we're going to have very competitive football tomorrow on Thanksgiving. Um Will it be good football? No. no. With the uh, with, uh, Steelers and Ravens being flexed out or covid out, however you want to, you know, put it, um, that was the game of the day, maybe of the weekend, depending on how you look at it. Um, but now we're in a situation where it's the Cowboys and um, football team. I didn't, you I didn't say did. it. You so almost did. Put a dollar in. I almost did. I almost did. You saw. I saw that. But... It's the football team and the Cowboys. And this is kind of the quintessential Thanksgiving Day game. You, you read into it however you want, but I read into it in terms of this is kind of what you expect with the Cowboys. Cowboys, Redskins. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right, there's my dollar. There, I knew it. I knew it. Okay. Cowboys and football team. This is the, the rivalry for them. Um, for whatever reason, it's been the rivalry. It's obviously not regional, but it is very entrenched in the history. We are looking at Alex Smith trying to revitalize his career along with Andy Dalton trying to do the same. Now, currently, as I look, we had it. Um, Washington is three-point favorites. Mm -hmm. I was a little underwhelmed by what I saw from Washington. I know they got the job done against Cincinnati. Um, but overall, I expected a little bit more from a team, especially when you lose, unfortunately, the only player the, the Bengals have, really, uh, outside of maybe A.J. Green five years ago, in Joe Burrow. That was an absolutely devastating injury. I hope he comes back here in the next couple of years. Um, but for the Redskins, for them to kind of hang their hat, and That's currently true. that is their one win. They did it again. Their, he did it again. I did it again. You know what? Just here's a 20. Just get me ready for the next 18 that come my way. It. But it's it's too too deep in the NFC East to back out of it now. But the football team from Washington is going to have to rely on that defense that unfortunately, you know, they didn't go out to hurt Joe Burrow, but that that defensive mentality, they got the job done. They showed that honestly for me as an Eagle fan, and somebody who follows the NFC East very closely, I think right now the Washington football team is the best team in this division. I think they have the best quarterback in Alex Smith. I think they have the best defense 
um, either Washington or the Giants have the best defense. It's not the Cowboys or the Eagles by any stretch of the imagination. One of those two, but I still think uh, Washington will have that advantage if they can handle what they need to handle. And we've seen situations of them struggling. And it's, it's in a situation of all the NFC least teams have an advantage of being able to get around their deficiencies. But right now for Washington, I think they have the best team in this division. And I really do think they're going to get the job done. I think they cover the three. Um, Now the over under is 46. That's a stretch for me. I have this one as a low scoring defensive game. I know the Cowboys have had their struggles on defense, but I do think I look back in the last couple weeks, we look at what they did to Pittsburgh. We look at what they did to Minnesota. I know they weren't, Minnesota isn't the greatest. Don't remind me about that Minnesota game. Exactly, you know. I I didn't want either of them to win. but Exactly, and they're not a great offensive team, but I do feel like if Kirk Cousins can find a a seam, then I think Alex Smith can find a seam. Um, So I like uh, Washington to lay down the three, and I like the under 46. I think this is a 20 to 16 game, 20 to 13 game. We're going to be put to sleep tomorrow. Um, and it's not the trip to fan in your turkey. It's just going to be the football on the field. It's going to be a lot of bad football, but there's still money to be made. Hey, uh, Coach Lupian. You know, I was really impressed. Not, not that impressed, but I really liked what Andy Dalton did last week. Uh, I think Zeke got running a, a lot better than he had all season long. And I think those two intangibles there uh, lead me to think that Dallas will cover. That doesn't say necessarily mean win, uh, but I also like the under. And um, one last thing, go Alex Smith. And I, I touted it last week. Um, glad he's back and healthy. And, um, I'm rooting for the local boy, but I do have the Cowboys to cover and stay in under. Hey, Raider Jim. Yeah, well, you know, I like any football game that's got playoff implications. How about that? And uh, (laughs) this does have playoff implications. What do you know? Uh, I think Washington is going to cover the three. They're they're minus three. I don't think that's going to be a problem. They aren't doing well on the road, however, they do have one of the better pass defenses when it comes to that division. And let's face it, uh, Dalton under center is good if he can stay healthy. But if they can get a little pressure on him and if those defensive – if the secondary can cover for the Redskins, Cowboys are going to have to rely on the running game. And the running game has not been that stellar for the Cowboys. Well, the whole season for the Cowboys hasn't been that stellar. So, And the other thing that uh, Washington has going for them is they sweep the series – if they win this one. Uh, so I think it's going to be Alex Smith is Alex Smith's day. It's going to be a good Thanksgiving. They're going to win on the road. Uh, I will take the Washington team minus the three. And I will also uh, take the under on this because I just don't see anybody scoring. Okay, yeah, it's going to be an ugly one. Tomorrow's just going to be ugly in general. Yeah. Um, so we're going to the second and final Thursday game. And if you're thinking, aren't there supposed to be three? There was until this morning. Um, So the Pittsburgh Ravens game did get moved to Sunday. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But going on to the second game, it is going to be Houston at Detroit. And Houston is a three-point favorite. And the under over is going to be 51 and a half. So Raider Jim, would you like to start? Sure. I think this is going to be really kind of a fun game to watch. I've been so off on Detroit the whole season. Uh, I never know which... Lion team is going to go out there? Is it going to be the guys that give the Vikings a run for their money, or is it going to be the guys that just lay down and can't get anything done? Uh, But on this one, I will also say Houston surprised me last week with the game they put up against the Patriots. I did not expect that in the least. So if something has finally clicked and they are going to come around and they're going to start putting together a string of two or three good games, they're going to be playing inside. They're going to be playing against not that good of a team let's be honest and so minus three for Houston I can see that 51 and a half in most instances I would say 
the over on that looks very inviting because both teams, if the offenses are firing, can put up points. So I'm going to just keep it simple, and I'm going to go ahead and go with Houston and the minus three, and I'm going to uh, cheat at a half point and just say over 51. Okay, Coach Lupian. Yeah, you know, I really like Houston. I really like um, like Raider Jim. I was surprised with the numbers Houston put up against a Belichick team, defensive team. Um, but apparently they made some adjustments to that uh, offensive scheme. They're giving Deshaun Watson more weapons to throw to. Um, and, um, and, and, and Detroit just hasn't done it for anybody um, in quite a while. But I do like the over. I, I, I like the over 50 versus the over 51. Um, 30 to 20 sounds right to me. You know, 30 to 21. You know, so uh, over 50 and Houston. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I think my love affair with Matt Patricia has been well documented, and it's definitely not a love affair. It's more of like taking advantage of the deficiencies of a human being, and that's okay. Um, but for Matt Patricia and what I saw from a Carolina team that I'm sorry, I maybe I've been out of touch. I didn't. Uh- I didn't, I didn't think Teddy Bridgewater not playing was a possibility. I really didn't. I didn't know until I turned on red zone and saw PJ Wright was, was, was starting. And you can talk to me all you want about the XFL MVP and you know, all that, but I wouldn't have made that bet knowing Teddy B wasn't available. Um, This situation with, this is more of obviously a, a, um, slight on Detroit that they were able to not only just get demolished by a PJ Wright team, but to not show a backbone. I mean, we're talking about gummy bears here. This is a team that is done. I mean, there there is nobody I talked about with Darius Dar- when Darius Slay was traded from Detroit to the Eagles how excited he was. I mean, he literally broke the news. He was the one, it wasn't Mel Kuyper. It wasn't Todd McShay. It was, it was Darius Slay saying, Hey, I'm, 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 I'm free. And that's what I look this Detroit team right now. I think Houston is on the right track. Um, They got rid rid of Bill O'Brien and they have a quarterback that might not be a Super Bowl winner, but if you bring some pieces in around him, he will get it done um so i I really do like deshaun watson maybe not so much as the patrick mahomes lamar jackson type but at least somebody who can put up some points so i like houston minus three and i'm with you guys um give me the over just because uh, i think we're going to see some points scored we have another short week and we have a situation of um detroit really this is their season I i really have to feel like matt patricia has to feel like we have to put a good performance out on Thanksgiving because that's what Detroit does, right? Um, And, or at least tries to. And I I just don't see it happening. I definitely don't. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the AFC West. And since Ray Jim, most of the conference division is going to be playing Coach Lupian's division, I'm going to start off with the Chargers at Buffalo. And right now Buffalo is the five and a half point favorite with an over under a 53 and a half yeah well it was an abysmal week for me as far as picks and things like that I mean it was just one upset after the other I almost took out the old twister game and just put all the team games on it this week and was gonna hit the little spinner and wherever it landed I was just gonna say here's my pick uh as far as the Chargers, uh they didn't let me down though Dog on it. I knew the Jets were going to cover the spread, and they did, and they almost got the job done. So uh, in true Charger fashion, uh, they could not win convincingly, and I don't. they do not have a chance. I don't know what the weather is going to be like when they go to Buffalo this week. I understand most of the nation is going to be fairly okay, but I know somebody that's in Illinois right now, and they woke up to snow yesterday and driving rain this morning. So I don't know what's going on on the East Coast, but uh, the charge is going into Buffalo. Buffalo is definitely going to cover that five and a half, no problem. 
And I don't know about the 52 and a half because I think Buffalo might shut down the Charger offense. Uh, um, I don't looking know. at the weather, it looks like it's going to be 49 degrees and just no, 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 uh, no rain, just cloudy or partly sunny. No elements to deal with. Uh, and Buffalo's nope. also coming in rested because after that last minute Hail yep. Mary pass game that they lost to the Browns, uh, so now they're just coming in pissed off. They're going to be pissed off at home. So look for them to definitely cover the five and a half. Chargers aren't going to have a chance traveling back east. They don't travel well as it is. So I think Coach Lupian has hit on that earlier in the season. Of the over 52 and a half, let's see. I think I would go under 52 and a half on this one because I just don't think the Chargers are going to get the ball in the end zone that much. So mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's game number one. And then uh, did you want me to keep going with my the next game? Um, I can go on to the uh, for the rest of this game and then we can continue. OK, go ahead. OK, Coach Lupian, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I'm, I'm in complete agreement with Raider Jim. Uh, Bills to cover under 52. I just don't think the Chargers will have enough to, to equate up to that amount. Yeah, I've, I've actually been, the last couple weeks, I've expected the Chargers to lose um, when it comes to Miami and the Jets. And it's just, I really do think, um, obviously, mainly with the Jets, I actually expected the Chargers to beat the Dolphins because I, I think I was a little bit too late on the Dolphins bandwagon. The Dolphins performance that I expected was last week, as opposed to against the Chargers, um, against the Broncos, unfortunately. But with the Chargers, they are a team. I love Phillip Rivers, and I don't ever want to put him in the same breath um, with any other quarterback. But right now, I think Justin Herbert is one of those guys that just somehow, some way, you're in every single game. They're in every single game. And I know, obviously, the past time it's been the Jets, and, but other times they've been in these games because of the quarterback play. Five and a half, I mean, you, you, you have to decide to whether it's a field goal or a touchdown game. There's no middle ground with five and a half. I do like the five and a half for Buffalo. I've, I, I love the point that um, uh, I, th I believe Coach Lupian brought up with they needed that this is they had the week to deal with the Hail Mary. I mean, we all we all if you were a Buffalo money line person like I was and there might have been another person on this podcast, maybe. Um, that was a tough one, but you had 13 days to digest it. It's now time to figure it out. And I'll tell you what, if you come out of a loss like that, the team that I would pick to face is the Los Angeles chargers. So, um, give me Buffalo plus, or I'm sorry, minus five and a half. I'd love to get him five plus, but minus five and a half. And I'm in agreement. I, I just, 53 and a half with the Buffalo defense. I really think the Buffalo defense is the strength of this team. Um, I really think this is finally the one defense that actually kind of slows Herbert down to a point. Um, but yeah, I like, I like this being a 30 to 20 game, 30 to 17, 31, 17 game. Um, Buffalo covers, keep it under the under. And that makes it a absolute unanimous across the board. Okay, going on to the team that should have won this week and better win this or this last week and better win this week um, is Raider Jim's uh, Las Vegas Raiders at the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah, Raiders. once again, uh, <laughs> yeah, we already made some statement about that and the Raiders. It was their game to lose, and they definitely found a way to lose it on. Sunday. And you better win this one. <laughs> and they, yeah, now it's in every every game is a must win and we've still got how many weeks left which is not well, the position you want Atlanta is also last in the NFC South so which really is a good win. thing I mean to to uh the Raiders actually after the Kansas City game the rest of the schedule that's the other reason this was so important for the Raiders they've got a schedule that favors them the rest of the way out so they could have done great things had they been able to hang on to that lead and just kept Mahomes out of the end zone, but they didn't do that. They are going into Atlanta, who is just not the old Atlanta that we, you know, we were used to seeing the last several years. And it's too bad because I like Matt Ryan. I like the way the game that they play. Uh, it's Raiders minus three on the road. 
they will cover the minus three over under 54. Well, we saw how the Raider defense plays. And even if they don't win the game, Atlanta's team should be able to put up points on the Raiders. So I would go over 54 on this one. Take the Raiders minus three. Um, and let's just hope for the best as far as the Raider Nation goes. Okay, Coach Lupin, what do you got to say about the NFC South Falcons? <laughs> uh, I don't have much to say about them um, being a conference rival um, and being owned completely by the same the last number of years. But I'm in agreement with Raider Jim. I'm picking the Raiders to cover the minus three. And I'm actually picking the over. The, the only reason uh, I'm going to think that Atlanta has enough to put up points is because, um, and this is no disrespect to the Raiders' defensive front line, but they're just not flying around like the Saints' front line did this weekend, recording eight sacks. They're going to get their sacks. Don't get me wrong. The Raiders are going to apply plenty of pressure to Matt Ryan, um, but it, it, it's not going to be as what it was against the Saints. Um, but with that said, I, I really – I, I, did Raider Jim say the Raiders found a way to lose it? I really don't agree with that because I agree it had to do more with Mahomes winning it than the Raiders losing it because I was really impressed with what they did. They looked just as good as when they beat the Saints in week two. Um, offensively, they were clicking. Defensively, it was what it was. But you get you get Mahomes the ball with a minute 56. The likelihood of uh, any team holding a lead is is uh, small to my new against him and that that offensive juggernaut of, of the Chiefs. So um, Raiders to cover and to the game to go over is my choice. Yeah, we'll make this unanimous. I agree. I, I for Atlanta, I expected last week, um, obviously with the Taysom Hill. I, I was very, very surprised that Taysom Hill was essentially the quarterback the entire game. I never in a million years would have thought that we did see Jameis Winston, but um, that was the case. And I, I talked about the like transition of power, not to be political, but I really thought that that was the time to get the Saints. And not only did the Falcons not cover the seven, they were not close. I think they might've been up in the first half at one point, but it really wasn't a close game once I think the Saints figured it out. Now, going back to Atlanta, um, I really do think this team can put up points, but I think the Raiders can do it more efficiently. Um, so, like I said, I think the Raiders win by a touchdown, and I think this I think this could be a 41-34 game. Um, this is going to be a game that, you know, the, the old tennis match, you know, get your, get your neck ready because it's back and forth going down the field. Neither of these defenses are terribly good. Um, I know the Raiders defense. I give a lot of credit to the Raiders. I, I really thought the Raiders were going to get blown out this past weekend. Yes. I think I said I it more in the podcast. I did. I, I thought they were easily going to cover that. And the Raiders not only covered, but like we already talked about, probably should have won that game. And for them, I think that's a massive, I'm not a huge fan of uh, moral victories, but that kind of is for them. But at the same time, you can't compound that by dropping the ball this week. This is a must win for the Raiders. This is probably the biggest game for the Raiders in John Gruden's, you know, second time here. And maybe in the last, I don't know. I mean, Raider Jim would be more uh, pronounced to say that, but I think this is one of the biggest games for the Raiders in a very long time. Because this is, I think they're measuring stick, period. Right, right. And then they, they also, have, at this point now, even if they don't make the playoffs, the big thing is, is how far over 500 can they finish? Yeah. Because that's going to be key. That's the other thing that everybody's been watching with this team. Okay, Gruden, how many years do you need before you can get them to go, you know, beyond seven and nine? At, at some point, it just gets old, especially when uh, – the campaign promise when he came back is no, we're going to the playoffs now. Okay, well we're waiting. You know, now now was three years ago, pal. So let's get on the stick and make something happen. Uh, one more thing on the defense, they they play well. Don't get me wrong, I'm pleased with the way they play defense. But again, uh, you got to rely. You you can't just rely on Max Crosby. 
because any offensive line and any offensive line coach is going to know, just keep him, keep him as far away as you can. We're not going to stop the kid, but do what you can to keep him out there. And then the defensive secondary, again, always soft, always soft. There's only, you know, Jonathan Abrams can only be so many places at once until they clone the guy. Uh, and then he's also got to understand that now everybody's watching him with his late hits, his 15 yard hits, his, oh, yeah. sports, you know, you gotta, you gotta keep an, a handle on that. So, you know, I love the, uh, the tenacity. I love the way he goes at it, but he needs to take it off the gas a little bit and, and play a little smarter when he delivers those hits. Agreed. I, I love bulldogs, but they got to be able to stay on the leash, right? Because you know, let, let's be honest. And 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 you're right. Once you get it, once you get a reputation, it's kind of over mm -hmm. from there. Okay. Since both the AFC West and the NFC South are facing each other, I'm going to start with Coach Lupian on this one. Um, with the New Orleans Saints, who I couldn't say anything bad about because they have now won six straight, um, going to Mile High, Denver to face the Broncos and the saints are favored by six points and the over under is 43 and a half. So, Coach you know, last week I said, last week I said, let's watch those numbers uh, from the time we recorded to actually that Saturday, Mr. First and I recorded two bees on a pod and it, it, it dropped. Like it was like saints minus three at one point. Um, and at that point I still wasn't sure what to expect with uh, the quarterback situation. Going into mile high, definitely impressed defensively with Denver, what they did last week against Tua, um, a very mobile quarterback, much like Taysom is here. Um, but they're a scrappy bunch, and I don't expect uh, the Saints to necessarily cover, but win, yes, because they're, they're a team that's used to winning ugly. So I don't expect them to cover the spread. Um, I do think this is going to be a, a game that stays under that number, even as low as that is. Um, Spagnola runs a very, very tough scheme. I don't want to say the defense is great and all, but they played better last week. And um, this is Taysom's second game under center. Um, not that I expect to see Jameis at any point, but um, I, I think when it all comes down to it, Sean and the boys know how to win ugly, and they're not ashamed to, um, given the fact that this is going to be Taysom's second game under center. Uh, it is in mile high where the altitude does affect uh, every player, every visiting team. Um, but, you know, this is, that's, this is Taysom's country. He's uh, from Idaho. He played at BYU. Um, he's played in the altitude. He's used to the cold weather. Um, not too sure lately in regards to being in New Orleans uh, the last number of years. But, um, you know, uh, let's just say Peyton schemed and played to take some strengths against a very bad Atlanta defense and team. Um and, and now every team in the league has an expectation of, of Taysom and, and the Saints offense, including Denver, uh, in a week span. So I, I expect the Saints to win. I don't expect them to care, cover. And I do expect it to stay under that, that, that total, I believe, 43 or 49, 49 and a half. 43. And 43, a half. yeah. Yeah, and a half. Yeah, altitude is no joke. Trust me, I know. But um, as I don't think it matters if you win like uh, dirty or not. It as long as you win. <laughs> yep. I don't think it matters. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, Raider Jim. Yeah. First of all, I'm going to give a big shout out to the Denver Broncos. I had Miami winning handily last week, and the real shout out goes to my buddy, Mr. Frank Kramer. He is one half of the Heidi and Frank Show. He's radio royalty in Los Angeles. And we, I have been feeding him picks all week. I'm sure he took his boys to the Broncos, but I, I made myself a promise that uh, when his guys uh, won their games, I would definitely give him a shout out. So to Frank Kramer and to all you people listening to the podcast, 
If you have nothing else to do early in the mornings, tune in 95.5 KLOS Radio in Los Angeles and catch the Heidi and Frank show. Now, with that said, uh, I don't think his boys are going to do it two weeks in a row. And I think I might have said it on the podcast last week. And all the uproar and the talk was, oh, my God, Breeze is broken. What's going to happen? And if I didn't say it on the podcast, I know I said it having a conversation about that game with somebody. I said, one of the things that's going to happen is the Saints are going to get together as a team and the defense is going to say, we need to come together. No yeah. matter who's behind center, we gotta, we've got to make sure that the opportunities to score are there and we've got to make sure we keep the other team out of the end zone. Now, are, are the Atlanta Falcons, the Denver Broncos? No, fairly close though. Let me tell you right now. And so I see that the Saints are going to cover this one. I think they'll cover it by six. Might cheat that half point and go for the Saints covering at five and a half. But I also think they're going to put points up. So if they can put up 30, then, you know, Broncos might get their two courtesy touchdowns. Just enough to push it over the 43 number. So I might go half a point both ways. Take Saints minus five and a half. Take the over under at 43. But I will take the, uh, I'll take over 43 on that. Uh, I did, the Saints have proved they are just good. They are a team to beat in the in the NFC, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Well, I, I'm the most impressed I've been now. I was very impressed with Taysom Hill. Uh, what he was able to do, I don't know if it's the Saints coaching staff that kind of kept him, you know, wow, that kid can throw the ball. Like we've seen glimpses of it but not in a situation of, I would never have thought that he would have taken, I don't know what the exact number was, but 90 plus percent of those snaps, if not more, he might've taken all hundred percent. I don't know. Um, no, he didn't. Okay. But a very, I, I really thought it was going to be 50, 50. I thought it would be 50 Jameis, 50 Taysom. And I know for a fact that wasn't the case with, I know Taysom went, I think 17 for 24 or something like that very very impressed with what he can do and if he's able to bottle that and keep that rolling I mean I feel like we have a Tebow with an arm situation because that's what we have it's a guy who can run guys over we've seen it he's run DBs over okay maybe not defensive linemen but no one's Derrick Henry throwing the football but he's been able to go out run secondary players over if he's able to throw the ball, I mean, even 15, 20 yards with accuracy, watch out. I mean, that's what Lamar Jackson wants, right? So I like the Saints to cover here. Um, and I also do like the over. I don't know what it is about Denver in that altitude. Um, 43 and a half. Most kickers can hit from 60 from there. So that's an extra three or three points, maybe once or twice. Um, I, this is a really low number. I don't love the Denver defense. I am. I really do think this is the best defense the Saints have had since they won the Super Bowl. Um, so I think all that equals an under. Um, but I do like New Orleans to cover the six, um, but also keep it under. I think this is a 27 to six game. Uh, a 33, 35, 36 game, 36 point game written all over it. I, I have no faith in the Denver uh, Denver offense anymore, unfortunately. Okay, moving on to the Chiefs at the Buccaneers. The Chiefs are favored by three and a half and the over under is 56. Uh, Raider Jim, we will start with you. Okay, well, the Chiefs, you know, again, they are the defending Super Bowl champions and they've gone week in and week out with the exception to that early loss to the Raiders. They have proved why they are the best team in, in football right now. Uh, going against the Buccaneers who, quite honestly, it seems like their consistency <laughs> or their, their, the weak links are starting to show. And yep. uh, you know, the last three weeks, uh, they had a, a strong game, a good performance against Carolina. But when they played the Rams, they didn't do too good. When they played the Saints, they didn't do too good. And let me tell you, playing the Chiefs is no different um, than playing the Saints or playing the Rams. 
So I think Brady's going to be in for another uh, long Sunday. I think he's going to disappoint all his fan base and the Tampa Bay folks when they have a second loss. And if, let's face it, he's going to shoulder all the blame, regardless if it's his fault or not, because he's the golden boy. He's got the name. He's got the paycheck. And so people automatically think you should be – you're responsible for the wins, even if your defense gives up the ball or, or gives up the game. Uh, do I think the Chiefs are going to cover on this one? I've got the Chiefs at minus three. Yes, they're going to cover on this one. Uh, the over under 53. Yeah, there's going to be some points in this one, too. It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a fun game to watch. But I think when all is said and done, uh, the Chiefs are just going to uh, out muscle them all on both sides of the ball. Okay, Coach Lippian. You know, um, the Saints put out the blueprint for every team in the NFL. And, and I said it. Last week, I, I picked the Rams to win. I, I, I specifically named Jalen Ramsey. He's been quiet with his mouth, but very loud with his play. Aaron Donald's a beast. Um, you put any kind of pressure on Brady and rest his pocket, he's not the same guy. But when I was watching that game, he's not the same guy even with less less pressure he's not reading defenses the way he used to um and that could very well be because his his timing is off because he's he's happy feet back there um i definitely have casey covering the minus three i think that's a slap to uh andy reed's face and and uh patrick mahomes face minus three against them this isn't the same tampa bay team the last three or four weeks and um, the blueprint's out. The defense isn't that good uh, as, as once touted until it just got demolished 38-3. to three. And, um, and it really hasn't recovered playing a less than par Carolina and then playing a very quiet, how did they do it? Uh, Sean McVay has his team in first place by percentage points over uh, Seattle, but still, like, I looked at the record today and I was like, really? <laughs> They're in first place? I, I had them to pick to beat Tampa Bay last week, but I didn't realize they were that good. So that they they snuck up into that the top of the NFC West, and rightfully so. But they, they're, they're playing a beleaguered Tampa Bay team. And, and KC, I, I expect a blowout, to be honest. Um, and the over, for sure, 53. So... Yeah, I agree. I, I really, I look at Kansas City and all the weapons they have, and they have an above average defense. I know there might be certain times where um, they're out there a bit much. Um, Patrick Mahomes st scores a little too quickly. I mean, I don't think there's any offensive coordinator or head coach who wants, you know, a, a quarterback to slow things down, but I think that has been part of it. We've seen situations with Tampa Bay against opponents that are where we expect them to be, you know, on the same and on the same level. I think Kansas City is actually a level above them. I think Kansas City easily covers this minus three and a half um, and minus three, however you want to get it. I would not be surprised if it drops even lower because of the Tom Brady effect. Um, I also agree with the over. I think we're going to see some points being scored. Um, with Kansas City, it's an offensive situation. I, I kind of go back to the Derek Johnson days and, you know, Tom Baha Lee days. It was a little bit more defensive oriented, not so much these days. So we'll see how that rolls. Um, I think they're they're kind of, relying on the fact scoring 30 points a game that's what we're gonna see um and that right there tells me an over so 56 high number but also a high offensive output i believe from both of these teams so kansas city minus three and i'll take the over and weather's no factor at this point but it looks like tampa bay has a pretty good storm rolling in on monday so depending on how the wind's blowing i mean it could come in and it could play a factor but at this point it is not Interesting. So. Keep an eye on that. 
Moving on to the only NFC South team that is not playing an AFC West team. Uh, the Carolina Panthers are at the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikings are favored by four points and the over under is 48 and a half. I really want Carolina to win because I really just want to see the Vikings go down, but I don't think that's going to happen. Coach Lupin? <laughs> well, you know, I really do think it can happen uh, given the output uh, offensively, what they did, what Carolina did last week. Um, and, and given the fact that Minnesota just laid an egg uh, last week too, you know, the, the, if they get Dalvin Cook running the way Dalvin Cook runs, it could very well be Minnesota. But, you know, they need a lead because Dalvin Cook's a, a downhill runner. And, and they're a team that holds a lead much better than gets a lead um, with that run game. Uh, Carolina, Carolina, uh, it's, it's plus four uh, under uh, number 48. I, I I actually, I'm actually might be losing you there, coach. Yeah, picking Minnesota just they have something to prove. They got to get it. So I'm picking Minnesota the 48. Uh, Minnesota, and I'm sorry. What was the uh, over under on the 48? 48 over, please. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it's interesting to me um, what we saw from Minnesota the first five weeks, not good. And then the last three weeks, they've gotten better. And then we saw last week uh, to lose to yeah. Dallas. I, I look, I, yeah. all, all the respect to Andy Dalton. Um, we're not Danucci. We're not, Glenn, or uh, Gavin or Gabe, Gabe Gilbert, whatever the hell the, the guy who played against um, uh, the week before. Andy Dalton was able to find a way to figure it out, but that defense was able to contain Dalvin Cook. That scares the hell out of me. Now, I don't think Carolina has a defense that's, you know, give them a gold star or give them a gold anything. But I, 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 I like Carolina here. I, I've been a big fan of Matt rule all, all season. He's, he's been a guy that at the very least has a plan in place. Does he have the talent? Probably not to where he wants it to be, but this is a guy that understands how to win football games at both levels. He was obviously very successful at Baylor. And I really do think he's going to be successful at this level. There've been a couple games that, you know, probably could have been in Carolina's favor. Haven't worked out. I think Carolina um, plus four, I'm not going to go as far to say, you know, money line these guys, but I definitely like them to cover the plus four. I could see maybe a, uh, a field goal game in that dome um, in November, which I'll go on the record saying, I'm sorry, if you, if you, if you play in the Northeast, don't play in a dome. That is a home field advantage. Don't give that up. I mean, it, it, it blows my mind that Minnesota, I understand it's crazy outside and I understand the Metrodome was indoors and all that stuff, but that is a home field advantage. Lean into it. Um, but anyways, I like Carolina plus four. Like I said, even with Minnesota winning by a field goal, um, in terms of the over-under, I like the over just because of the lack of defense from both sides. Okay, Raider Jim? Yeah, uh, I would agree with Brandon on Brandon first on, the, uh, on Carolina plus four. They've only got four wins. Half of those have been on the road. Minnesota has four wins and they've lost four times at home. Uh, they just, for whatever reason, they don't play well in that dome situation that you were just talking about. And I, I just don't see them, they, their consistency is terrible. So I see Carolina coming in, putting together a strong game. On the over under uh, 51, one would think it would go over, but I'm gonna go under 51 and a half on this one. 
So I'm going to take, uh, because I've got an over under a 51 right now. I don't know if that's uh, current. I had, fifth, I had 48 and a half on uh, Vegas Insider. That was the biggest consensus. That was yesterday. So, okay. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. The movement. You're correct. It was 48 yesterday. It was 49 opening. And uh, as of right now, it's showing at 51. Mm. So 51, I'm going to go under 51 on that. Uh, but I will take definitely Carolina plus four. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the NFC least. Um, taking a page out of Coach Lupian, uh, his book. Uh, we're going to start with the Giants at the Bengals. Um, so obviously the Giants are favored at five and a half. The over-under is 42 and a half. Look, we talked about it a little earlier. Joe Burrow, nasty injury last week. I didn't see it live. I ended up seeing a video on Twitter. I don't think he's going to come back for at least two years based on how bad his injury was. Uh, he had an MCL and ACL tear, as well as other structural damage in his knee. So I do not think he's going to be back for next year. Yeah, this is a quick little shout out to our friends, uh, Craig Mizrak, who uh, we, we spent a, a heavy majority of last year kind of badgering him saying, hey, you guys are going to take Jake Fromm number one overall. And it's a lot, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, just messing with him. Um, obviously, they took Joe Burrow. They made the right decision until they decided not to invest in that offensive line. That was the biggest problem. There have been plenty of quarterbacks in the NFL that have had bad offensive lines. You can pretty much go through pretty much every rookie or at least first quarterback taken. Generally, if you have a bad offensive line, you're not a very good football team. Therefore, you're drafting very high in the draft. In this situation, it's a lot of ball dropping and there are situations of what do you decide to do? Do you want to go out and build up your offensive line? Well, if you don't want to do that, then it's probably best to have somebody not named the number one overall pick, which in this case is Joe Burr, because we're in a situation where we all expected this. I mean, we're week 12. Now, I never, ever wanted to see Joe Burrow be out for what looks like, like you said, two years. It looks like a heavy injury. But I think we all expected something to happen because of the people he put in front of him. As an Eagle fan, believe me, I see, I see that very quickly. That offensive line getting rid of your top – quarterback really quickly now we weren't talking about um Carson Wentz in that situation this was a catastrophic injury I really do hope that it doesn't set him back it may we don't know but I agree with you I think we need to see he needs to take a year and a half at the very least and believe me even if this team even if AJ Green turned back into AJ Green and uh uh Trevor or uh, Tyler Boyd, I think that's, or yeah, Tyler Boyd turns into, you know, the next Randy Moss. We're not seeing the Bengals in a playoff game. So um, in this situation, five and a half for the Giants, this is a, I'm not playing this game personally. Um, I'll just, th I don't think the Giants are five and a half points better than anybody in the league. I honestly don't. But like I said, at the same time, this is a this is a toilet bowl game. I don't know why you're watching this game. I really don't. If you're betting on this game, okay. But even then, there are plenty of other bets to be out there. This is a really bad game for me. Um, I guess for the sake of all of us here, I will take Cincinnati plus five and a half um, just because I like uh, Zach Taylor a little bit more. At least he has one year of it. Uh, experience more than uh, Joe judge um, in terms of the over under at 42 and a half. That is so low, but I really do like the giants defense, the Bengals defense, not so much, but I really do like the giants defense. I think they're able to keep it under. I think this is a 20 to 13 game. I think this is probably one of the worst games of the weekend. Um, so yeah, give me Cincinnati oh. plus five and a half under 40 uh yeah under 42 or no did i say no over 42 and a half i think that's a little low um 
I'm, I'm not betting any way on this one. This is a I bad mean, game. You called this one a toilet bowl game. I would also call the Washington football team versus the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys a toilet bowl game too. So Pretty much, except this game has other other games around it. At least the uh, Dallas uh, football team, it's, it's the only show in town at the time. So They're still toilet bowl games, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rita, Jim. Yeah, well, here, here's the way I see this one, and here's why I think the Giants are going to have a great week. Who would have thought we'd be sitting here week 11, 12, whatever it is, saying, well, this is it. This is when the Giants keep their playoff hopes alive. But that's exactly what we're saying. They're one and four on the road. They're there. This, you know, it's kind of like we were talking about the Raiders. If the Raiders want to stay in the playoff hunt, it's up to them. They've got to win. Guess what? The Giants are sitting here poised. Who would have thought, again, week 11 or 12, whatever this is, we would have been saying that the Giants are playing for a playoff spot and that the Giants were coming in six-point favorites on Vegas Insider. But they are. And guess what? I think the Giants are going to cover five minus five and a half. Uh, Cincinnati, uh, Joe Burrow, what an injury. I used to work out with a guy. His name was Jimmy. And Jimmy was one heck of an athlete. When I knew him, he was, he was playing strictly basketball. But we were talking one day. He was a tough guy from Chicago. And he says, you know, I used to love to play football. He says, and uh, I was a wide receiver. And one day, he says, we were practicing. And I ran a pattern across the middle. He says, we had this defensive back that was all everything. This guy hit me so hard. My helmet flew off. I think I was out before I hit the ground. I got up when I finally woke up, I walked over, I picked up my helmet. I walked over to the coach, put my helmet on the ground and said, I'm done. And I walked off the field. I never played football again. If I was Joe Burrow, I'd take my insurance money and say, gave it my shot. What network wants to hire me? I mean, really, uh, what a catastrophic injury. And why do you want to put yourself back out there? That's your legs. I mean, you know, there, there's a lot on the line there. I'm sure he'll come back. I wish. I mean, the same could be said for Alex Smith, though. Yeah, and, and boy, and even it's all risky. It's all risky. I just think after a while you have to, uh, you hope they have good agents, and I'm sure they all do at this point in time because, you know, the agents are getting paid uh, their percentages too. That's the Aflac right there, the, uh, the Aflac duck making yep. sure that he That's gets it. his money right there, 100%. Right. But back to the game itself, I think the Giants are going to uh, – I will go Giants minus five and a half, and I think that they will uh, – let's see, 43 and a half. I would go under 43 and a half on this one. I'll take the extra half point on that, but I don't think it's going to score a lot, but – Again, watch the Giants for the playoffs. You know, it, it's it's hard to compare uh, Joe Burrow and uh, Alex Smith, just given the years in service in the NFL. Um, not a bad call in regards to, you know what, Bengals, you're not going to surround me with uh, or protect me with guys on that front line, you know. I'll play through my rookie contract and and that's it. Like I'm gone kind of thing. Alex Smith, you know, he's, he's on the latter end of his career and to come back from what he's come back. Hey man, like all props to him. Like, like I'm so happy him being a local boy and, and just uh, getting that nod for Washington. Um, but in regards to this game, I, I think the giants could smell playoffs at this point and really are going to put their best foot forward to cover that um, five and a half. But I do think the game will go under. I don't know what to expect from, a, from a Cincinnati quarterback that Mr. First alluded to Burrow didn't have any weapons except for an AJ green, maybe five years ago. And he's not what he is then um, now. And you just don't know what to expect from an offense uh, uh, from Cincinnati. So I'm going with the Giants and I'm going with the under. Okay, the last game in this division is Brandon first Philadelphia Eagles at home against the Seattle Seahawks for Monday Night Football. Yeah. Oops. That's right. You can't get away. You can't get away from the NFC lease. You know, there, there are certain Sundays where maybe uh, – 
You get lucky with your local team, or if you have NFL Sunday ticket, you can get away from the NFC least. That will not be the case. Uh, to be fair, we Monday. can't get away from your division at all this week <laughs> because you've got tomorrow. Well, blame the uh, blame the uh, schedulers. The local, yeah, the local the local stations who love. I can blame the, the NFL that. schedulers too. Yeah, definitely. And for the Eagles, look, I, I I've run out of. I don't know what to do, honestly. I love Carson Wentz. I think he, three or four years ago, was the MVP until he blew out his knee. Um, a lot of freak accidents had happened. And I don't want to put this on him or anything, but you know, maybe having a kid in the off season slowed him down. And that's fine. I, you know, at the end of the day, you should be a better father than a quarterback. And that's fine. Now, for me, I'd rather you be a quarterback, better quarterback than a father, but that's just me. And right now, for the Eagles, last week, the thing that lost the game for the Eagles was, once again, Carson Wentz throwing up a pick six. But I will throw a caveat out there. I don't know what is going on offensively in that coach's room or whatever, but they run the ball very, very well. They can run the ball. They ran the ball so well early to start that game. And then all of a sudden, I don't know if those guys just decided, hey, we don't get paid if we don't throw the football or I don't know what it is. NFL blitz type stuff. I don't know what it is, but they started throwing the football. Fantastic. Until Carson Wentz goes full Carson Wentz. This might have been the worst game Carson Wentz has ever played. He was like 10 for 21, 10 for 25 deep in the fourth quarter it was it's disgusting i'm an eagles fan and i don't want this team to make the playoffs because it would be an absolute disgrace to everything football has to offer i'd rather have a top five pick than make a the playoffs i mean we're closer to a top five pick than the playoffs at this point and we're in first place it's disgusting now looking at this game currently the seahawks or i don't know if it's currently at least as of yesterday the Seahawks were five and a half point favorites. Seahawks all day. This team, if the if the Eagles can't beat the Giants, the Eagles will not cover against the Seahawks. And, and if they do, five. then it's a miracle. And it's, we're it's all getting two right Christmas now. presents this year. It, it, it's not going to happen. This is a team that is as average as you can get on a good day. They're not good at anything they do. Miles Garrett wasn't in this game this past week. He still got sacked six times. So there's nothing that anything can happen that is going to make me think that the Eagles will cover. So maybe this is the exact opposite of a biased effect. I am done with this team. This team is trash. I am taking Seattle minus five and a half. And if you can get a money line under 175 180 take it because it's gonna happen the eagles are going to lose this game on monday night and i mean that's the biggest lock of the week and i'm a big eagles fan as you can tell i have no faith in anything that they put out on that field rant over we've lost faith in your team like all year so it, there's nobody that believes in your team but yourselves not even me not even us we're done we're moving on we are, we are officially on the make money against our team. That's where my camp is, at least. Okay, Coach Lupien. You know, I don't have this much heart, um, energy, um, heart meaning love for this Eagles team as Mr. First does. But, you know, I've felt that way uh, – about this Seattle team. This Seattle team has proven not to uh, be able to stop teams, except for, you know, when uh, when they when I pick against them. But I'm not afraid to not pick against them again. Um, Seattle pulls out the victory because the Eagles will find a way to give it up at the end, covering the 5.5. So. I, th I think the Eagles will cover the five and a half and lose. I do think this game's going to go over 50 and a half. You know, 
anything in the 40s seems just like a low scoring game to me. 50.5 is just 1.5 points over it being in that 40 range. So um, I'm going to go with the over on it. I do like uh, Philly's run game, and uh, I don't like Seattle's run defense. Um, I don't like Seattle's secondary. What can I say? Um, and you know what, Mr. First, you have every right to be mad at Carson this week because the dude's playing very undisciplined football all season long and probably the best quote that I heard, don't quote, I don't ask the name, um, but shame on that coaching staff for not being able to discipline him more recently than, than, than they have. Um, yeah. But that's not to say um, they'll, they won't cover. I actually do like them to cover. Um, maybe I'm just uh, the, the black sheep at this call on this, on this one, but Hey, you got to risk money to, to make money, I guess. Amen. Yeah. I, I I'm just frustrated. I, I really do feel you guys have brought it up before and I've been the one saying no, 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 but it, it might be the Frank Wright situation. Frank Wright might've been the, 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 he absolutely the thing was. That made everything click. <laughs> when the wind but this is why we don't bet on our home team. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, unless you're going the other way, because I have made a lot of money betting against the Eagles this week or this year. So, like I said, I, that's one thing right now. Like I said, if you can get the Eagles minus 175 or lower, or I'm sorry, the, uh, uh, Seahawks. the Seahawks. Yeah. Sorry. Seahawks. Uh, minus 175 or lower, do it. I got the the Browns at minus 140. I, I was doing a happy dance throughout the entire house. Wentz, I, what I was doing, but Wentz is ultra talented, top 10 quarterback potential, but he lacks the discipline that we've all recognized in a more recent Philip Rivers. It's a good call. And and good you know point. what? And you know what? Look who Philip Rivers is playing for right now. Yep. And showing a whole lot more discipline than, than seasons past. Um, this is on the coaching staff of the Eagles. They got to coach him up better and they got to discipline him because you can't coach the talent that he has in his arm, but you can't coach the discipline or awareness or reading things uh, in a player. And right now that's just lacking. So. Agreed. Hey, Raider Jim. Well, I just think that Brandon should lay flat on a couch when he starts talking about the Eagles. That's kind of, I'm sorry. How, uh, ma- how many? I feel how like many I should put on my, have? yeah, I should get my old corporate wardrobe out, put on a coat and tie and get my legal pad and go, mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? How does that really make you feel? <laughs> uh, but I've been there. I mean, I've been there through the, the bad years after 2002 with the Raiders. So my heart goes out to you. Uh, here's what I see. Now, here's irony. Here, I, I love these ironic things that come up when we do the podcast. Yep. We have two teams playing. We've got the Seattle Seahawks, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Eagles at three and six, the Seahawks at seven and three, both teams fighting for their playoff lives. What do you think about that? Now, there's irony in those numbers, isn't there? Uh, but with the Seahawks, the Seahawks out of their last three, they had that squeaker victory over the Arizona Cardinals that they really shouldn't have won when it comes right down to it. Right. But then right before that, who beat them? The Rams beat them. That was their chance to make their statement. We're the best in the West. They didn't do it. And then who did they lose to before that? The Buffalo Bills. So they've got two losses, Bills, Rams. Then they came back, barely squeaked by Arizona. And now they're going into Philadelphia and they've got to start making statements to themselves. They've got to prove to themselves. They got to be able to go into the locker room at halftime and they've got to go into a fourth quarter saying, we got this one. We've got this one handled. And I think that's unfortunately exactly what's going to happen uh, when they walk into Philadelphia. I checked weather. It's going to be cold, but the elements aren't going to play a factor. They've got rain going on, I think right now and tomorrow but it's going to clear up by Friday, Saturday. I think the Seahawks covering the current line I'm seeing is Seahawks minus five. I think they win by six easily a full touchdown on that one. And the over under 50 is a tough one because 
I know Seattle can put up points and I know they can give up points. I just don't know what Seattle can do. But I think I would still, I would cheat it back at half a point. I'll go uh, over 49 and a half. Uh, but I think Seattle's definitely going to cover at minus five. Yeah. Okay, moving on to the rest of the field. Um, so I alluded to it a little bit earlier. The Baltimore-Pittsburgh game did get moved to Sunday morning. And this was because of COVID on the Baltimore side. So currently seven players have tested positive or have come in close contact with somebody that tested positive. And the Ravens have disciplined a staff member in regards to all of these cases. So there's an upside, but I know the Steelers are pissed because this is the second time that they have had a game get rescheduled. So, so Brianna, let me ask you, uh, do you happen to know what, uh, what, what is the percentage that this game will not even go off? Um, um, the reason they postponed it was so they can get extra tests in. So I think we won't know until at least Saturday Okay. <laughs> whether or not it's going to get played. Good well, that's, the, that's the scary part of having – we are now in the situation this is the first week. Um, when I put the spreadsheet together, yeah, all 16 teams are playing. So this is the first week of that post. Everyone's had their buy, I believe. Um, like I said, we have Carolina has games. not had their buy yet. Neither has Tampa okay. Bay. <laughs> okay. So for whatever reason, this week we have 16 games, but we don't have all the buys figured out. So, but anyways, at least in terms of this week, we have 16 games going off. And I've always felt like this was going to be a problem in terms of what happens with a team that's already had a buy or both teams have already had a buy. What do you do now? Baltimore Pittsburgh was kind of all of our Thanksgiving savior, right? Like that was going to be the game that that had actual playoff implications with all due respect to the NFC least like actual Super Bowl asp aspirations not happening. We're moving that to Sunday. I am interested to see how this goes. Um, I've been a big fan of Tuesday night football. If, if you guys want to push this just a little bit more, I would love to see a Baltimore Pittsburgh Tuesday night football game. Now I'm sure the players involved don't really want to do that because they will have to eventually come back to the office uh, on Sunday. But with Pittsburgh currently, as I'm looking at it now, uh, five and a half point favorites. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't see Pittsburgh going undefeated this year. I think they are probably the worst 10 and 0 or 11 0 team. I don't know what their record is right now, but whatever that and O is undefeated. Yeah. Well, exactly. Whatever it is, you put uh, all the 10. other undefeated teams up to this point. They are at the bottom of that Ooh. list. Well, here's Not the thing. If they play Tuesday football, the Ravens have to play on Thursday. Oh, the Ravens happen. have the Thursday game against the Cowboys. Okay, so that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That. But oh, I mean, goodness. this game is this a division is a rivalry. This is a divisional game. Like, oh my goodness. Felix are obviously undefeated in at the top of the division while the Ravens, Ravens are in third. So if this yeah. game does get played, are we going to see call. Pittsburgh's first loss or the Ravens I, just I, keep I, going I down really their hill? Do, I do think. We are going to see Pittsburgh first loss. I, I, I've been one of those people that have said Lamar Jackson has been beyond below average. He has been one of the more like Peyton Hillis MVP to where he is now. Like that's where we're talking about regression. Um, but at the same time, I don't think that's the rest of his career. I talked about it last week that maybe he's an RG3. I don't think that's the case. I think. Baltimore gets the win here. I think they actually win this game. I, like I said, I don't see Pittsburgh winning or going 16 and 0. I really don't see that happening. I think this is the time they get it done. Pittsburgh, this is the game they've kind of had circled. Um, now, obviously it's not on Thanksgiving, but it was originally going to be. Um, so with that, I will definitely feel very confident in Baltimore covering. I'm not going to go money line, but give me Baltimore plus five and a half or five, wherever you're looking. Um, where I'm looking right now, uh, it was 44 and a half as of yesterday. Uh, I, I'm going to go a little bit over. I think both of these offenses are a little bit more high powered than the usual Steeler Raven team. Um, so give me Baltimore plus five and a half and over 45 and a half. 
Okay, Raider Jim, let's go with you next. Yeah, beginning of the month, November 1st, it was Baltimore and the Steelers. It was, uh, it was a minus four game at that time. It ended up being that Baltimore lost 24 to 28. The over under was 44 and a half and they definitely went over. It was a, a 52 point total. Since then, uh, you know, they had one, they had the good win. Ravens had the good win against uh, the Colts, but then they lost to the Patriots and then they lost to the Titans and they didn't really look too good in either game. Uh, when they were favored by seven points and favored by six points. And I don't think there's just, they're not that team they were last year. And I know we all keep thinking, no, nah, but this is it. Jackson's going to have, this is the game. I've been thinking the same thing. Oh, there, he's going to come back. He's going to, he's going to be pissed off, go gangbusters this week. And I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think that much has changed since November 1st to November 29th now. And I, I just see Pittsburgh uh, getting it done. I don't know. Uh, I, this might be a money line game or this might be, you know, and that's based on the four point spread that was out there the last time and nobody, you know, it didn't get covered. So maybe you look at money line Steelers, this one, and what is the current over under that I'm seeing is 45. They went 52 the last time. So these, and weather's not going to be an issue. I see it going over again. So, uh, and, and I'm actually showing a uh, current line on Vegas insider at Pittsburgh minus four. It's, almost down to the wire what it was the first time they met three weeks ago. So I would take money line on this one, uh, Pittsburgh, and I would take the over because I think they'll score some points. Judge Lupien? I'm also going to go with Pittsburgh. I have seen a – we've all seen a regression in Lamar Jackson. Yeah. yeah. In the last couple of weeks – there's been a regression in that Baltimore defense. It's not as stout as it's been in years past. Um, Ben's playing uh, turnover free football. And that's all Pittsburgh needs him to do. Um, he's distributing the ball quite well. That offensive line is clicking. They are a, I, and let me relate this to the Saints. They are a, win ugly kind of team just given that they come from a blue collar town um and with that said n when we first got this the the number was minus five and a half now it's dropped to four i don't understand i i understood the five and a half i don't understand it dropping down to four um similar to the november 1st matchup um but i'm gonna stay with pitt and, um, yeah, they may not finish undefeated this season, but it's not going to be against this Baltimore team. Um, I am going to go over 45. I think that's really low uh, league-wide standard. Um, but let, let's go Pittsburgh minus four, if that's what it's saying right now, over 45. Yeah, that's I we we were definitely all consensus on the over on that one. Um, yeah, it, it's that I think there's going to be plenty of points being scored, whether it's obviously on Thursday or now, especially. You know, Sunday. if it even gets played, because right. you know, I saw a couple of names on Baltimore's COVID list. Mark Ingram, <laughs> my guy, former <laughs> Saint, big truck. <laughs> You know, um, and we're talking about Baltimore offense. Well, let's talk about Baltimore balance, um, being able to run the ball from the running back position, being able to run the ball from a quarterback position, and then being able to throw the ball. And not having this stout running game just leads to a whole lot of imbalance with the over, uh, offense overall. So um, I'm still sticking with Pitt. Yeah, I agree. I, and I don't want them to go undefeated this season because then we got to hear those Miami guys, those old Miami guys come out of the woodworks and be like, we had the best undefeated team. Yeah, I could do without that. Next, next game. Okay, moving on. It's going to be the Arizona Cardinals at the New England Patriots. The Cardinals are currently 
uh, two and a half point favorites and the over under is 49 and a half. Can we get a weather report? <laughs> yeah, you guys can start. I will look that up. <laughs> because yeah, you know I, what? I, I'll, I'll, I'll start this one off. Yeah. I, I was a little bit under, underwhelmed um, by what we saw from Arizona last week. Now it was last Thursday, of course. Um, I'm sorry. I, I did not even know Kyler Murray had an arm issue at all. Uh, and it was no matter what they say, it was an issue. He was getting treatment from it. The minute he stepped off the field, I know they said, Oh, well, it wasn't injury report related, blah, blah, blah. But we all saw it. He, he was getting, whether it's icy hot tiger bomb, we've all been there. There there's some sort of muscle relaxation going on in that situation and for Kyler Murray, it was a bit of a underwhelming performance, but I also do believe he was hurt. So it's not that underwhelming with new England. The last couple weeks, they've, we go back to the jets game where they're down what 10 points going into the fourth quarter and they barely squeak that one out. And we think, okay, this team is officially dead. And then they do what they've done the last couple weeks. I don't really know what to, how to roll with this team. Honestly, um, I will Before say you pick, the weather is going to be 52 and sunny. Oh, so not, not really a factor there. That's no. a, that's a brilliant day in new England, but for me, it's like them apples. Yeah. I, I'm going to take Belichick and I'm going to take his situation with points in new England in a team that plays in a dome normally, and I, I understand the weather won't be a problem, but 56 degrees is still, you know, 20 degrees cooler than their uh, their dome out in Arizona. So I, I like New England plus two and a half. I don't, you know, we could maybe see a field goal game. If you want to buy yourself a half a point, I would probably do that to get yourself New England plus three three so that's where i'll find myself at um in terms of the over under plus 49 and a half mm, i i want to go over but i'm gonna i'm gonna be a little conservative here i'm i'm gonna go under just because of kyler murray in the elements and i like i said i know this isn't you know 10 degrees below zero or anything like that, but there's going to be some wind. I'm sure it's going to be a little chilly for his Oklahoma, you know, Southern California feel. Um, So I'm going to take the under just because I'm looking at a lot of uh, where I've gone. I have a lot of overs and what I saw this past weekend. um, I think a lot of unders are going to start to come through with the weather that is also coming through. So um, I like New England plus three. I'm going to buy the half point um, and go uh, under 49 and a half. I'll go next because I really don't like New England against mobile quarterbacks. Um, And that number is relatively low, uh, low enough for a visiting Western team to, to cover. Um, I, I think, um, under 49 and a half is, is the call to go here, but, um, I, I don't think 52 and sunny is nothing big for a Kyler Murray. That's like, a uh, a, a, like some he's seen out in Oklahoma, you know, I mean, it doesn't, I mean, those, those are some chilly areas as well, yeah. not New England chilly, but I mean, they've all experienced it at some point given that football is a winter weather sport. So, um, and I do, I just do like the fact that Carolina our Cardinals are in a playoff hunt. Uh, they're chasing that wild card and, uh, and, you know, I don't know what to expect from new England. Like you said, you know, to, to get beat by Houston the way they did, facing a ultra athletic mobile quarterback that continues to keep plays uh, um, going with his legs just isn't fair. Well, so I do like Arizona minus two and a half and under 49 and a half, excuse me. 
Hey, Raider Jim. Yeah, you know, one of the best things for me that's happened during COVID in 2020 was when they announced that Hulu was going to bring back the Animaniacs. <laughs> So I was all dialed in for that. And when I watch the Animaniacs, I've always thought this too. Why does Bill Belichick remind me of the brain in Pinky and the Brain? And I figure he sits in the locker room and says, we're going to take over the world. And, you know, and through all the foils that go on and get in his way, somehow he happens to win. But what team is going to take the field this week? Because what you're looking at over the last two weeks, well, let's go three weeks. We'll go the entire month of November. They lost to Baltimore, to the Bills, and they were supposed to lose to the Bills. They fought for their lives to beat the Jets. Okay, so we'll take, one cancels out the other. But then it's these last two games that really make you scratch your head. Who would have thought they were going to go out and beat the Ravens the way they did? They were they were seven point dogs on that one, and they and they won. And then, but then last week they were two and a half point favorites, as we all just said, against the Texans, and they couldn't get the job done. So, what team shows up this week, and why? Well, Belichick's back to the drawing board, and you know he's doing his thing with his chalk and and giving his talks. And I think he's going to have the team ready to put a game together at home on Thanksgiving weekend. And he's got them convinced that all we got to do is make a run through December. We're going to be a wild card and we're going to be in the playoffs and we're going to reclaim our position at the top of the pile. We're going to take over the world. And, and I just really think that they're going to cover that two and a half. Uh, let me get back to where the over under is. Uh, the over under 49 and a half, both teams. I would go over 49, I'll bump it down a half point, but I think uh, I'll take New England plus three all day long on this one. I, I absolutely, I have to just say this right now. Um, never in a million years would I have expected uh, my, my friend and colleague, Raider Jim, to reference <laughs> Pinky in the Brain. That is uh, a little bit more my generation thing. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about it right now, like, wow, where, where can I find Pinky in the Brain? Because I really want to go. I mean, that was a fantastic cartoon. Um, that's, that was amazing. Uh, they are back on Hulu, the Animaniacs. They are, and the, and the, because that's where they, that's where they began was the Animaniacs. And that was like their little small little skit, but never in a million years would I have thought that that would come up in a Raider Jim's thing. But I, I completely agree because it is a situation of Belichick trying to take over the world. And I just want to confirm um, you were over or under on the 49.5. I believe what I left. I think I said, I'll cheat at a half point and go 49 over that's, 49. That's what I thought. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Next up, Brianna. Okay. So the next game is going to be Cleveland at Jacksonville right now. The weather report is saying 76 with some rain. Cleveland is the is favored by six and a half points. The over under is 49. I'll hop so, on this one first. Okay. Um, I, I've been a fan of what I've seen from Cleveland, even this past weekend. Um, they, in the, in the elements, obviously we're not dealing with that. I mean, shoot Jacksonville. Well, Jacksonville 76, that sounds about right. But um, I don't think elements are obviously going to be a problem. Obviously, even with the, the rain. Okay. There's, there's a little more, you know, water out there. Okay. That's something you have to deal with, but I really don't think professional athletes, I mean, they've all held the ball in the rain. They've all ran the ball in the, in the rain. It's not the end of the world. Um, six and a half for Cleveland here. I don't like it any higher. Um, once again, this isn't one that I'm going to fully go all in on, but I, I like Cleveland under a touchdown. I was wrong last week. I thought Jacksonville would show up a little bit more. Um, I think it was against Pittsburgh. Did not happen. Um, but at the same time, I do like Cleveland six and a half or under. Anything a touchdown more, I, I, I'm a little colder on. But like I said, right now when I did the, the spreadsheet, it was six and a half for Cleveland. That's, That's where I'm going to stay. 49 was the over under um, 49 is a tricky number in football. I mean, that's, those are three touchdowns versus four touchdown type things. Those are, that's a very even number for football. 
Um, I'm going to go over just to kind of go the other way in terms of um, the weather. I know last week I expected that Jacksonville offense to at least start to get rolling, but there are some weapons there that I think eventually will get over that hump. Will this be another week of me losing another under with Jacksonville? Who knows? But um, I'm really confident at six and a half. I'm not going any higher, but Cleveland minus six and a half. If you get any lower than that, fantastic. Any higher than that, stay away. Um, but yeah, Cleveland six and a half. I'm going to go um, with the over 49 just because the I, I, I kind of like the offensive uh, weapons on both sides. I'm going to keep this real short because I'm not into this game and I haven't, I haven't paid much attention uh, to Cleveland as they actually they're respecting a lot of attention and I'm just not, I'm going to go with Cleveland minus six and a half over 49. Just leaving it at that. No way Jacksonville wins the game, but I will tell you Jacksonville has made a practice of covering the spread and they've got three big covers out there. They covered against Houston, the Packers, and the Steelers even. Those are real important games. That's important to pay attention to. They will cover the six and a half. I'd even, at that, the way they've covered, I would cheat it up a half. I would say, give me the Jaguars plus seven. And on the over-under at 49, there's only been one game where they have gone over 49. And that was when back in mid-October when they played the Lions. Other than that, they have plateaued at 49 or under. So I would take a plus seven Jacksonville and under 49. Okay, so next on the list is going to be Tennessee at Indianapolis. Indianapolis is the three and a half point favorite and the over under is 51. So Raider Jim, would you like to start? Yeah, I just... Uh, I have this tendency to grow fond of any quarterback who was good and beat the Raiders uh, back during the 2000s, the early 2000s and forward. And when they leave the Chargers, uh, then I become a real big fan of theirs. Drew Brees as an example. And now it's Phillip Rivers because I always thought he was a great guy. He's just not the guy you want to see on the other side of the ball when he's playing your team. Uh, he's playing, he's having a great season and I really am glad for him. I think they covered the three points, no problem. Tennessee's, uh, but then again, here it is, another one of those playoff games. All these, uh, I don't know if it's the effects of COVID or if it's just the year itself, but here we are, two teams, seven and three. Again, and it's a three-point spread. That three points is because it's Indianapolis's, uh, you know, the token three points you get if you're the home team. But uh, I'm going to go with Indianapolis three, and it's going to be a fun game to watch. I will go. I think I'm going to have to go under 51 on this one. I think defenses are going to step up. In total agreement with that under 51, I think other than Taysom's week last week, there's no harder quarterback than actually Phillip Rivers. And he's actually showing the league what he can do with a stable offensive line and they're, they're really good defense under they're a no name defense. Indianapolis is a no name defense and they're getting it done. Um, I'm going with Indy to cover the three and a half. It's going to be a slug fest, but you know what? I, I have to attest that Derrick Henry has not found his running legs yet. They're worn out after last season. They, they wore him out into the playoffs. They just haven't recovered. He'll have a big year next year. It's just not going to happen now. Um, and I'm definitely saying with under 51. Yeah, I'm, I'm very confident on the under. Um, the line, not so much. I, I, I could go both ways, honestly, but I'm, I'm going to go with Indy. I've been impressed uh, from what I've seen, especially this past weekend. They got themselves in a situation they probably should have lost that game straight away and got into a situation in overtime. They lose the coin toss and they still are able to go out and get the job done. I've been thoroughly impressed, impressed with not only Phillip Rivers, but the Indianapolis defense. 
Um, I like Indy to cover only because I've been, I've been trying to expect Tennessee to turn a corner at some time. I am no longer going to, you know, bank on that, if you will. So um, I'm going to currently, like I said, it, it, right now it's three. I would like to get it at 2.5 um, just because three is obviously one of those numbers, but I'm still okay at uh, minus three. And I like the under as well. I think two good defenses. I think two, they're They're going to, they're going to play it safe. I think both of these teams are playoff teams. Neither team wants to really go too crazy here. Um, Indy's going to win the game, cover the three, uh, keep it under 51. Okay. Next we've got the Miami dolphins at the winless New York jets. Uh, Miami is favored by seven points and the over under is 44 and a half. I'll pop on. I'll, I'll start this one. Um, Miami, obviously last week, that was underwhelming performance. It was uh, the one consensus bet that we, we all were the unanimous bet. I should say that we are all on and didn't really come to fruition. I expected that performance um, a week earlier against the uh, Chargers. Now the Jets, a different situation. I like Miami to cover here. Is Tua going to play? Is it that big of a question to me? Because I really, I would still lay down the seven points with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm not terribly impressed with the Jets' um, offense or defense for that matter, or coaching staff or really anything they do. So give me Miami. Um, minus seven and I'm actually going to go under 44 and a half because once again I, I, I really like what Brian Floros has brought to the table with his entire team. Hey coach Lippian. Um, I'm, I'm quite the opposite with this. I think um, I, I mentioned Spagnola's uh, defensive scheme uh, against Tua uh, this past week and yeah you know what that was a consensus pick here. That was a consensus pick across the nation. So I don't feel so bad about it. Um, but um, I, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm looking at it like this, you know, the, the blueprint is out how to contain a Tua. Um, you throw different looks in, in the zone defense and see if he could pick it apart. Well, he wasn't able to last week. Um, in a cold weather environment. Um, I don't think he'll do it this week, uh, given that uh, Adam Gaze had, had time to game plan for it. And um, that's not to say Miami won't win, but I just think seven's a little too high for this game. Um, especially if Mr. First is picking under 44 and a half and I'm picking under 44 and a half. I just don't think there's a wide spread coverage uh score wise against the two so um I'm, I'm equally disappointed in in miami's result last week and i hope that's not why i'm i'm not picking them to cover but i'm also of the 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 feeling that teams are starting to realize um how to game plan for a tua or to attack him on a defensive end uh not that the jets have plenty of defensive weapons or talent or whatnot i just don't think that if it's going to be under 44 and a half there's a lot of there's a lot of margin to spread out between a mine a seven so i'm going jets plus seven under 44 and a half raider jim yeah um what a game uh last week for the dolphins and i i don't i think it was more of a fluke if you want to call it a fluke denver definitely had them figured out uh, I don't know if that's going to play over into this game. Now, on the over, I would take Miami straight up in this one. Jets aren't going to win. Do the Jets cover? Possibly, because I will tell you what, in their last four games, they're three and one against the spread. The one time that they that they were beat by the spread was when they played the Chiefs, and well, that's the Chiefs. So they got dismantled. Other than that, those three games where they covered they beat the spread was against the Bills, the Patriots, and the Chargers. So they could very well come back and cover again against the Dolphins. That said, 
when they had their first meeting this year, and the reason I'm going to take under on this game all day long and just take the Dolphins straight up, Dolphins just mopped the field with them the first time out. I think they shut them out 24 to nothing or something like that. They already know the game plan. They already know how to beat these guys. They know how to keep them out of the end zone. Nothing has changed with the Jets that played the Dolphins the first time around from then till now, and I don't see much of a different result. But with that said, that's not to say they can't cover. So I'm going to take Miami straight up on this one and go with the under 45 and a half, 44 and a half. I just don't see the Jets scoring that. Okay, next up is the San Francisco 49ers and the Los Angeles Rams. Um, so they're going to be in LA. The Rams are favored by seven points and the over under is 45 and a half. Okay, Coach Lupin, do you want to start? Absolutely. Um, because I mentioned how quietly the Rams have crept up into the NFC West lead, just percentage points above Seattle. Um, I definitely had all the confidence in them to take care of Tampa Bay. Um, but, you know, to San Francisco's dismay, I was really impressed with what they had done defensively against my Saints. And I could see that happening here. Not necessarily losing to the Rams, but definitely covering the seven. Even if Mullins is the quarterback again, which is highly likely, um, I do see Robert Sala scheming for a NFC West conference opponent very well. Um, they seem to know each other very well. Uh, and I'm going to go with the under 45 and a half just because the Niners are a kind of team that can throw a golf off. <laughs> golf. That didn't, you know, and um, I don't have all the trust in golf to 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 not throw a or not turn the ball over. So I'm going the Niners plus seven under 45 and a half. And um, hey, be against it. Hey, I'm not I'm not afraid of to go over there, you know. Yeah, I I agree. Um, the Rams have been one of the more, I guess, um, surprising teams after what they went through last year with all their thing. I talked about it earlier. It's more of a, um, it's not the flashy players. It's, it's just kind of the, the, the lunch pill guides, but at the same time, I look back at the, when, when the Rams were playing the Buccaneers this past weekend and Cooper cup just completely undressing the cornerback i don't know who it was but it was it was it was a slot route it looked like an out and in or a or a in and out i should say and the db just looked just ridiculous i don't think we're going to see that with san francisco um sala is going to get these guys ready to roll i like the seven once again i'll pay a little extra to get to seven and a half but plus seven is good for me um i'm gonna go over just because I've seen the way the Niners have played. They've had situations where they're, they're a fantastic backdoor cover. They will come through and give you down 14 um, with two seconds left in the game. Nick Mullins will throw a 50 yard Hail Mary that will not only get you to cover, but it will also get you the over as well. So I'm going to cover myself on that side of it. Um, but I do like San Francisco plus seven, um, but I'm going to go over 45 and a half just because I think there will be some points being scored here, but um, I really do like San Francisco to cover, but not win. Hey, Rainer Jim. Yeah. Two different teams from when they met earlier in the year and earlier in the year, it was uh, San Francisco won. They beat the Rams earlier in the year and it was a 51 point total. But again, that was a different team. Uh, I think the Rams are coming on strong. I think they've got a lot more confidence. Uh, and what do you say? I mean, you know, if, if you really, what's a telling tale about the real San Francisco 49ers? For God's sakes, they got beat by the Eagles back in October. I mean, you know, 
<laughs> that that oh. felt like a shot there, Raider Jim. That, uh, that, it, that it, felt it, like a bit of a shot right there. I'm not going to really lie. It wasn't. It really, it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. If it's true, then, you know, it's not my fault. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but do I think that they're going to come out? Uh, do I think they're going to cover seven? I think that they can cover seven. Uh, they're not going to win the game. And the, at 45, it's interesting. They've done pretty well uh, on the over-unders. 45 against the Rams team. I would go over 45 on that. I'll take over 45. I'll take San Francisco plus seven. You know, my, my last thought in regards to these Rams um, is more of a disrespect to uh, a Tampa Bay defense and a whole lot of respect to a San Francisco defense. Right. In regards to why I'm going the way I went. But I'm still going to go with the under. You guys can't convince me otherwise. <laughs> okay, last up, we've got my Chicago Bears um, at divisional rival Green Bay Packers. I'm not looking forward to this game. Um, Packers are favored by eight and a half points, and the over-under is 45. Again, I don't like this game. <laughs> I'll lead this one off. Um, this is a tough one because it's it's tough. If if you think Green Bay is going to cover the eight and a half, you would almost kind of you know forty five. That's a tough number. Um, we're having Mitch Trubisky. We know that. We're not. We don't Mitch know yet. We well, don't know. Okay, we know he's, it's he's got a shoulder injury. We don't know. Okay. Um, I'm still going to take Green Bay eight and a half. I, uh, that's a lot of points to put up. Um, but being in Lambeau, um, we, I don't know what the exact weather is, but um, I'm, I'm going to take Green Bay, lay the eight and a half points. Hold no elements. No elements. Beautiful. Um, the, the over under being 45 is low on one side for the Packers, but not really low on the other side for the Bears. That's a tough one. Um, I've actually, I've really liked what I've seen from the Packers defenses this year. So I'm going to go Green Bay to lay the points. Not terribly, I don't like laying anything more than a touchdown. Um, but uh, give me, give me Green Bay minus eight and a half. And I will take the under because I, I I am very similar to what I've seen from the Saints. I like the defense that I've seen at times from the Packers. Now it might be a COVID situation that I've been referring to, but we shall see. Well, since you threw my Saints in this conversation, the only defense you could really compare the Saints defense to in this game will be Chicago's defense. Unfortunately, and fortunately, they just don't know who's going to be under center. And that very well may play into advantage Chicago. Um, eight and a half is a relatively uh, reasonable number, actually, that I really have a lot of against that defense, though. I, I just don't think it's going to happen. You know, the. Aaron Rodgers is uh, coming off last week's performance, just kind of in fumes the way it ended, you know? So I could, yeah, it could go either way. I don't really like it. I'll, I chose Chicago to cover the eight and a half over 45, but at this point, like, uh, it's going to be one of those, don't stay away from it and, and go with Green Bay just to go with Green Bay, <laughs> you know? More than anything, the game. I don't have the same faith that you do in their defense. I, I just don't. Um, and, you know, there is a locker room rallying cry to prove uh, the front office that they're wrong um, and they need to surround Aaron Rodgers with better talent, and they're not. Um, but that's a whole nother podcast. I'm staying away, but uh, uh, since I text you my picks earlier, I'm not going to shy away from saying Chicago plus 8.5 over 45. I don't have to play it, though. No, text definitely you. this is not yeah. a playable game. No, this, no that's not a play game. game. That's too big of a number. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna take, I would take Green Bay straight up on this one. Eight and a half is a lot of points. At the same time, it's what I said a few weeks back. Um the one pissed off guy I'd never want to play against is Aaron Rodgers. 
he's he's too cerebral he's too competitive and he just he put you know when he gets put in these situations he likes to come back and prove himself and prove what he can do but he's one guy and he's not on the defensive side of the ball he's on the offensive side of the ball the other team is five and five and that tells their whole story we're not good but we're not bad we're really nothing we are, you know, we are a, a glass. We're, we're not a ice cold drink on the hottest day of the year. And we're not the hottest cup of coffee in the winter. We're just a lukewarm glass of water. No offense, Brianna. So, I already told you, I don't like this game. So, <laughs> and so I, I don't I, have faith. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a high scoring game. If it is, it is going to be those Packers putting up something like, you know, 31 to 31 to 13, something like that. So I would take Green Bay straight up and I will take the under, I'll go one half point more and just make it under 45 and a half. I love the Bears, but I don't like, I really don't like this game. I think it's only, I think it's only fitting too, because, you know, it was kind of the start of uh, Brianna's little intro was a bit of a, a jab towards the Raiders. So it's only fitting that uh, Raider Jim gives a little jab back. I, like I already don't have, he, uh, he at least has faith in his team. I don't have faith <laughs> in that team this week. There's a difference. Yeah. Mitch Trubisky versus Derek Carr, that faith will we definitely. That happen. would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Trubisky <laughs> needs to go away. Yeah. Trubisky needs to go away, but we don't even know who's starting because Trubisky That's has their injury. And then Foles has a hip injury. We don't know who's going to start. They're probably not going to tell us till Saturday or Sunday for that matter. So we don't know. Uh, final thoughts. What a what a fantastic. Um, I mean, I, I was terrible this past weekend. I I, I won't lie. Like I I am looking at it right now. I was twelve and sixteen against the spread and the twenty eight picks we had, and it wasn't fantastic. But it was the first week that I've been less than, or you know, whether you want to call it in the red or the gr- black or whatever. Um, this week, I, I look at a lot of these games. We're at that part of the year where we're going to separate, you know, outside of the NFC lease. One of those teams is going to have to make it. But we're going to start to separate the real dominant teams and the teams that are actually going to contend from the less than teams. Um, and like I said, with the one extra playoff team, uh, I think it does add a little extra incentive you that number one seed is now the right. end all be all it's no longer one or two and we'll deal with home field in the afc or nfc championship game that's not the case everybody has to if you want to get a buy you have to get that one seed i love it i think it's great i think it's going to be an interesting um little curveball to what we have but you know in terms of what my eagles got going on I got nothing. We're, we're, we're trash. We're a really bad football team. And I'm almost to the point where we should start tanking for Trevor because we might need a quarterback. I don't necessarily think that way. I just think I might be a little coach him up better. We just signed uh, Carson to a five-year, you know, $150 million deal. So that that's not really a possibility, but it's just Brandon being dramatic. All right. Drama's good. <laughs> Final thoughts. Uh, I don't know what my numbers were last week. I'm just too consumed with other things. If you wouldn't mind sharing those with me, I'd you were be... 15 and 13. Raider Jim oh. was 16 and 12. I was the only one under 500. When, um, and all of us have been um, over 54%. So we're all over the profit line. Yeah. Last week was a bit rough, but for me at least, you guys have con- constantly been over 500. Um, last week, I believe, was the first time any of us have been under 500 by a lot, and that's unfortunately me. All right. Well, well, I appreciate that, and and um, those are my final thoughts. My numbers were good last week. Let's hope <laughs> that they were this week too. So, <laughs> happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Absolutely. And um, you know, again, just much thanks uh, for getting this together, and the rest of you taking your time out to to get this show back on the road and uh it's one of those wednesday nights that i could always say i i enjoy um now on to some san diego state basketball there you go yeah, no ucla <laughs> yeah she's a little bit out and out. who's ranked until uh, up until they, they, they won't be ranked after tonight yeah, exactly come on talk about a flip okay i 
I am the lone wolf out here. <laughs> what do we got, Raider Jim? You know, I think you hit it. Uh, th this is the time of year in the NFL where you're going to start seeing uh, the guys that are going to be there at the end. They're already going to start showing up. And it should be, uh, we should be able to start picking games with a lot more accuracy now, I think. You know, co if we can keep COVID at bay, uh, if COVID stays out of the way, but, you know, that's going to be very interesting to see what happens with this Baltimore-Pittsburgh uh, game because that's going to throw a real wrench into the whole thing, especially with uh, Baltimore slated to play again on Thursday. Yeah. So we'll see. Great call. Okay. Last thing is, shoot, the Bears are seventh in the NFC. So I've got that going for me right now. <laughs> okay, so that's been it for the Off the Bench podcast. Uh, so make sure you stay healthy, wash your hands, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Thank you, you too. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thanks. Great show.